Thursday, September 12th. Hello and welcome everyone. Today I'm going to be taking you out into our garden and our property and show you what it's looking like. It's, it's coming off of five consecutive days of 103 degree plus weather, which is a little bit unusual. We'll get temperatures that are high and they're usually one or two days consecutively, but this was five consecutive with um, a couple of days hitting 118 degrees. So this is the state of our garden and it's mostly been untouched since coming back from a week of camping, I've stayed indoors mostly because of the hot weather. Um, kind of got out of my groove. Normally I'd be working and planting stuff continuously. So these are just things that are growing by themselves right now for the most part, other than uh, watering. I haven't been adding more seedlings to the garden except for some recently. Um, with the Weather cooling off, which is, we're in a major transition now in the year where the daytime lows are in the 60s, uh, as opposed to anything higher. So um, we're going to rely less on some of the foliage that we allow to grow in during the summer. By allowing them to grow in, we are able to create shade for our property and create a microclimate that's cooler. And then it also helps shade the house so we use less energy to keep it cool. Now with things flipped around, we're gonna want the sun to hit the house to help keep it warm. And so we're gonna be cutting back a lot of foliage. And um, this is something that is good practice regardless. This in Southern California and warm cli climate areas is to prune back the trees significantly. So with fruit trees, we often model what we see um, and how they're grown commercially. But in a backyard setting, smaller trees are better, mostly because trees are very productive and they can produce more than we can eat. And as a result, they can become waste. If they fall and drop on the ground, they can attract vermin and rodents. And so those, those create problems in the garden because then they'll go after your other things like tomatoes. So making sure the trees are sizable is really important. We're gonna be taking off a good portion of the tree here. This is a peach tree. That's gonna come off. Same with the citrus and the other, other trees along this row here. Um, I wanna say that there is a caveat with that in that we're able to do this in the warm climates because once you start cutting something off the tree, it creates sprouts. And that's a natural thing, it's a good thing, because then it can, for fruiting trees, it creates new fruiting wood. And in the warm climates, um, this is a good time because the sprouts will grow into fruiting wood that will produce the following season. If you're in a cooler climate, colder climate, it's probably not ideal, so follow the best practices of your area. And I would imagine that in that in your colder climate, you wouldn't want to do this because um, it can re the cut can introduce disease to the wood, and then further, you're not going to get the advantage of having new wood, new fruiting wood because the cooler climate will stifle the growth. Anything that sprouts might die off from the cold. So um, I imagine that summer pruning is not an, a viable option. So maintain your trees during uh, maybe I would say late or summer or early summer I should say and late spring is my guess. Um, the other thing that we're going to be looking at is just our garden over here that is pretty much on autopilot with exception to this uh, Genovese tomato plant that was started in the summer. So this is a summer started plant for fall tomatoes so we got some fruit set here and um, I train it the same way as for summer harvest and that means watching how the plant grows and then controlling for how the plant is growing so for instance i don't want too many lateral growths so i'll pinch those off and if you've seen a lot of my tomato videos we call these um, lateral growth most people call them suckers and if i miss something and too many too many of these lateral growths grow um, and there's fruit on them or there's buds on them. I'm not gonna necessarily 
pinch off or cut off the whole thing i'll just terminate the tip so that it doesn't continue to grow so for for fall i don't want too much this is already you can see there's four there's one two three and four you can see there's a bunch so i've already pinched off the tip of that one and the tip of that one i, I think two is probably going to be good and the best and over here we have bitter melons that are coming in and over there some blue beach tomatoes so i'll swing around and get a close give you a closer look at them and most of our tomato plants that we grew for summer they've been removed except for this blue beach and we left it because it looked pretty healthy still and, and robust and, and you can kind of tell because when you get towards summer the the leaves that grow towards the top they kind of get smaller and smaller so um when they do that i kind of prune them back because it tells me that the plant has doesn't have enough energy to sustain the new growth so we prune them back and then all the stuff that's down here it has to become tomatoes for us and and i'm optimistic that there's still warmth in our um, summer to ripen them we got some that are turning color up there so we'll get some late summer tomatoes and then the other thing that's really loving the heat are eggplants so this is a shiku eggplant and during the heat they just explode with growth and fruit some of these are a little bit too far along this is still good if we stew them and then these these smaller ones they're a little bit more tender and have fewer seeds so, so we're gonna pick those and then other other things as far as chores, clean this up. Uh, major cleanup on that slope over there. We, we have um, a family of, if I, didn't, if I didn't already mention this, we have a family of seven raccoons and then we got some smaller groups that come and patrol the area and they, they dig up everything. So this year uh, they did a lot of digging up there because I've been using automated irrigation and there's probably it's probably more wet than it needs to be. So I've, just, I've noticed that if the soil is really wet, the raccoons really like to dig them. So we're gonna have to fine tune the irrigation schedule and um, after we clean that up so that we don't encourage the raccoons to dig everything up. So that's one area that we gotta clean up. And then there's a winter melon. I don't wanna miss showing you some of the interesting fruit that we have. So that's a winter melon up there. It's an Asian uh, melon. It's got a very soft texture um, and it's good for soups. And then it could be candied and made into desserts, but I prefer savory bone broth and winter melon. Very tasty, very healthy. This is ricotto, the pepper. And we have our reed avocado that we're gonna plant. plant. So, fall is a good time to plant the best time to plant avocados because in the summer the heat creates stress and if a plant hasn't been established and um, that stress really damages and kills the trees and this is from speaking from experience we got a longan fruit tree that we have to plant we got some new healthy growth and then some of this is older leaves um, so some of these dots, I'm blanking out on the name of the bug, but these dots are a type of bug that um, suck the sap and cause browning. So we got to, they're, they're not too much of an issue. Uh, for the most part, the plant is healthy and will recover. Let's see, what else? Um, here's a Scotch bonnet plant. I didn't know how rare they are this year. Uh, I couldn't find the seeds. I didn't do a good, good enough job saving the seeds and then so I couldn't find the seeds that I would uh, find normally online. They didn't have them in stock. And then as far as this pepper, it's kind of rare. So it took me a while to find the plant to grow peppers with. So these are yellow scotch bonnets and we use them for Jamaican or island or Caribbean cuisine like the curry chicken, curry goat and all, and all that stuff. Um, and then over here we have a reed avocado tree and I wanted to show you this reed avocado tree. Uh, it's a younger tree, it set fruit 
maybe three and I pinched off two because I wanted it to more to concentrate more on its roots to, to be nice and established so it'll be more productive longer long term um, and I didn't come out to shade the fruit so we got some some burning there and I'm wondering if I should just pick it off but I think I'm just gonna go with it and just leave it there and see what happens and you'll notice we have this plant here this is a broccoli plant and it's it's here to act as shade for the tree so it's creating a microclimate a lot of people like to use paint to paint the, the bark but I find that by doing companion planting like an avocado or like a broccoli because it's lush uh, last, I tried to establish some what's it, what you call it um, hairy vetch in here and then this is a bunch of uh, carnation it actually was growing pretty thick here but I noticed that the carnation seeds they're appetizing to to rats so I had to clear it all back and drop down its mulch so that was bad timing on my part because I cleared it back and there we got some 118 degree days and I didn't come out to shade it but all in all I think we're good so not is lost not all is lost so let's head out to the front oh before you know what speaking of avocado I wanted to show you I'm very excited because um, I finally figured out how to grow avocado trees and not kill them and so we got a Pinkerton avocado one last year and now we have our other varieties producing and you'll see here you're, you're already seeing that I'm starting to work on clearing back all this growth so let me let me get in there and show you this is lamb house let me try to find it here we got I think we got almost 20 fruit on here so we got some lamb house right there and then the variety in the pot that you saw that's reed and then you saw Gwen on the other side that's producing and then this is uh, Pinkerton this this Pinkerton didn't establish any fruit this year so hopefully next year we'll get some Pinkertons and then we got um, these are guavas these are Malaysian red guavas this is finger lime here um, acerella cherry and then this is our panache fig up here this year in Southern California we have we got hit with the uh, black fig flies so early early on they they damaged a lot of fruit so there's fewer fruit this year but we do get some because nature likes to leave even though there's a lot of consumption they like to leave uh, a little bit for for regeneration or a little bit for other organisms and creatures that would rely on it as a fr food source so it's while they're invasive they're they kind of leave a little bit so that so that the opposing forces can keep up the fight so that's how uh, things kind of kind of regress so when you have a spike of bad stuff um, that's how it kind of regresses because there's a little bit left over so if for the good fight to fight and if it's a good fight then it it, it uh it suppresses that that spike of bad stuff anyways um got a little bit philosophical there for you uh, we have some more biomass so uh in a regenerative and biodynamic dynamic um, method of growing we use biomass so we're collecting the sun's energy to turn into potential energy that's stored in leaves and other things and then it gets broken down as in the process of breaking down it eventually becomes nutrients for our soil so growing a lot of biomass is something that uh, I've taken to doing in the last few years we have millet here and this can be uh, eaten by our chickens it feeds them and then there they turn this into a fertilizer for us eventually so it breaks down and I like this millet because it has a purple color and I like contrast so purple purple is nice you can see the contrast against the green um, I'm going to take you over towards the back here so we have a lot of different varieties of fruit here and then as far as um, 
an update. I got a plary tree that we planted back there. So a plary is a, um, a fruit that has cherry and plum qualities. And when I tasted the fruit, I really enjoyed it. So we have that plary that's over there and the variety is sweet uh, treat. So that variety is there. And we have, this is a Santa Rosa plum and the Santa Rosa plum will help pollinate it. So they're very close in proximity and that should give us uh, a lot of fruit. And with the plary, that's a fruit that I would want a lot of. So there's that one that's new. And I'm gonna take you to the front where you can see how our front yard growing, garden is growing. And I'm gonna, I'm looking at the broccoli, so I'm gonna stop here first before I forget. Here's our broccoli. Um, we have a broccoli plant here, and those are cauliflower plants. And they were growing out here during the 118 degree day. Um, so it should be okay. I found that if you grow the brassicas, the cauliflower and broccoli a certain way, um, the heat really isn't going to be an issue. So they're known as fall crops. I've discovered that in California we can grow them year round. So the halos are here because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have raccoons that are just after things in the soil. So they've dug up plants. And so the halos will hopefully keep our plants safe. And then I also got this uh, wire mesh that I cut a slit at and I just slid this in between the stem here to help protect our um, broccoli plant. So that's that. And then we have a bunch of glass gem corn. So this is what they look like. And we use this as chicken feed or we can use it as popcorn. Although I find that it takes a little bit more effort to pop glass gem corn than say, a more formal popcorn variety like strawberry popcorn. So we have a lot to harvest and clear back. And then we also have pumpkins to clear back. So we got that fall vibe going on. We got some, uh, hopefully there are the tiny small pumpkins as well. These are, those are sugar pie pumpkins. And then we have one that's new to us. I wanted a, a variety of pumpkins for fall decor like that Casper pumpkin. And maybe I'll put up on the screen the picture of our pumpkin harvest last year and our, our little pumpkin arch. Um, so all that's gonna be cleared back. And then we got some more millet here. And we have potatoes that we still have to harvest. I don't know what they look like. Usually you wanna get them out of the ground before the bugs start eating them. But I've been keeping this area dry so they should be okay for the most part. So I need to come out and harvest our potatoes. That's a sneak peek of them. And then lastly, uh, the fall chores also extends into some of the foliage that are growing along the house or against the house. And we use these types of plants to help regulate the temperature. Like this umbrella plant, we're gonna be taking it down um, so that we can have the sunlight hit the house. In the summer, the sunlight is very intense, so you don't need a lot to hit the room to, to light it. And then also in the winter, we're gonna want as much sunlight as possible to hit and warm the house. So we're gonna clear all this back. So I'm looking forward to collecting all this biomass and turning it into the energy that we use to grow our plants and keep them happy and pest resistant like the broccoli. So I wanna say pest resistant because as I said earlier, um, when th there are things that come in spikes and if you have a, or if you're able to fight the good fight, then you're not gonna have issues from that. Like with the broccoli, when we have broccoli, we don't use any kind of pesticides because we don't need to, they're naturally pest resistant. Uh, so if you find aphids underneath the broccoli, it's, it's a really hard to t take them off. So it's best just to keep the broccoli plants happy and let them fight the good fight. So that's, uh, that's our garden and how our property is doing. Um, this is pretty much how we grow things, use the sun's energy as much as possible to grow 
the biomass like the grass that the the chickens and the ducks eat this is our past pasture and rely less on uh, formal chicken feed and stuff and then um, even the roof of the coop we're using that planter as a type of solar panel to, to collect the sun's energy to grow things that we can eat so that's um, pretty much the theme of our, our our method which is turn that energy along with water and harvest the minerals in the ground into some form of uh, thing that can be used by another thing so in, the, in this case a chicken or if you get a little bit more um, further in it'd be a mineral for a plant which then produces the fruit or vegetable containing the mineral which then we eat or the chickens and the ducks eat or the rabbit eat all right that's gonna be it for today's update I got a lot of things to do lots to, to cut back some uh, garden infrastructure chores to do like fixing that panel over there that blew out uh, tidying up a little bit and then adjusting our irrigation so that we minimize the attraction of raccoons to to the area and the like we also have some more plants to transplant like the the marigold so we bring some color and interest to the garden when we clear back the front of the squash plants and the corn and then also we have some more um, broccoli brassica transplants to put in that are growing underneath the grow light uh, as an insurance policy against the 118 degree weather so they seem to be growing on the same uh, path as the plants outside but it's good to have that insurance policy and with that we'll see you in the next video thanks always for coming out and taking your time out of your day to see what we're up to and hopefully uh, there's something that was insightful that you can pick up and apply to your gardening or your path. See you next time and have a wonderful day.